What's going on everyone and welcome back to Chasing Sunsets. Let's continue the story. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. And let's continue. We left off a bit of a cliffhanger here where we have a serious question from Jay. We're finally going to tell her why we didn't visit after she finished pre-bed. Here we go. I told you, I made a friend in Honduras. Yes. David. I don't know how even describe a guy like him. He was a historian, a prisoner of war, even a combat hero. Sounds exactly like the kind of friend you'd make. Does it? Maybe. I was fortunate enough to be one of the few who really got to know him. Tell me who he was. A man of rare honesty, wisdom, and principle. Sounds like you inherited your mother's eye for judging a guy's quality. Well, even she got it wrong the first time. She made it up for it the second. That's for sure. James and David actually had a lot in common. Anyway, all those pushpins on Dad's map, David and I were traveling together. He did this willingly? Still got jokes, I see. <laughs> Sorry. Please continue. He wasn't the easiest person to get to know. But he taught me how to survive, and then how to thrive. Oh my god, are you two an item? No, nothing like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That door may be locked, but I could still throw your skinny ass out the window. You expect Jay to keep teasing you but she just waits for you to continue. You show me that dwelling on regrets just cheats you out of life. You taught me about respect and a kind of strength you don't learn in sports, but you saved the most important lesson for last. What was that? So, mom did call and gave me the details of your graduation. Valedictorian, she said. She was so goddamn proud. I was too. You were? David and I were in Tunisia, close to the Libyan border. We were headed north to Tunis, and from there, to Sicily by ferry. Sicily? That's where you were when Dad and Mom had their accident. Yeah, I was to fly home out of Italy when David took care of some legal stuff. With you so far? David's brother got rich on popcorn, popcorn and gifted him a villa in... Palermo. And was going to handle the transfer of ownership while I was in Boston. And that's when everything went to shit. Oh boy. Tunisia, one year ago. David's back. I have enough cash to cover your flight home out of Naples. Oh, come on, David. I can still afford a plane ticket. Thunder of a distant explosion rolls across the desert. Bad business, that. Maybe has gone to hell. There's a border crossing here, so refugees? The State Department just flipped it to red for travel. Uh. Let's find a caravan and give her a feet of rest. Old town feels like a powder keg. Tell me what you see. No children playing. It's morning, almost no activity. Curfew, maybe? Just common sense. When in Rome. Yeah, let's find some place low, uh, some place to lay low, so we can hire some wheels. Ah, tourists! You and David see a shady-looking man regarding you curiously. Azlema, passing, just passing through. The man smiles mirthlessly as two more unsavory thugs appear out of the shadows. Oh no! Everyone. In here is just passing through, but travel on foot is foolish in this heat. We are expecting a taxi. Man scowls at that. No taxis are running. There is a war on. Haven't you heard? The thug makes a show of pondering alternatives before grinning sadistically at David. Perhaps if you give me your taxi fare, I could transport you. Realizing your peril, you instinctively begin scanning your surroundings as David taught you. 
No police in sight. And any bystander is cleared out when these assholes showed up. David? We're men of the world. Let's not pretend you are our friend. Very well, man of the world. Then let us also not pretend you are waiting for a taxi. What do you want? As the man laughs, you think you hear the click of a gun being cocked from behind you. Behind us. Revolver, I think. I want you too. You shall be ransomed. A life for now, unless you wish to make trouble. We're worth more alive than dead. Of course you are. But bodies don't fight back or try to escape. Decisions, decisions. Now! Before the men can react, you climb a stone wall and jump to a rooftop. I don't even know. You hear shouting behind you, and it's already starting to fade as you pick up speed. Your heartbeat echoes in your ears as adrenaline courses through your body. If two are after me, they will have no problem with the ringleader. I'll just circle back after I lose these clowns. Uh oh. No! You pull yourself up short and begin to make your way back to where you left David. No, no, no! Winded, you arrive at the first rooftop and slowly peer over the edge. The thugs are gone, but you see no sign of David. That's blood. That's when you see David's boots protruding out from behind the stone wall. David! Jumping down to street level, you rush to aid your friend. David slumps against the stones, the crimson stains spreading from his chest. His eyes are open and his breathing is shallow. David, hold on! I'm going to get help! The pistol the thug used lies in the dust, along with David's wallet. There's still some cash in it, so David must have dropped it. In his hand, he noticed a laminated white card, which he weakly tries to offer you. But with each shallow labored breath, you hear entering the wound of David's chest. Fuck. Sensing time is short, you clasp a hand holding the card between your own. Holding back the building wave of grief, you look into your dying friend's eyes. Normally, you struggle with even, struggle with even basic Hebrew, but this time the words come effortlessly. I'm not even going to try that. A sigh escapes David's lips, and then he's gone. Oh shit. He just stares at you in shock. Alex, I... That's the day I learned how the world really works. I've seen glimpses, sure, but nothing prepared me for this. What happened then? I closed his eyes. I said goodbye. And I pulled his body out of sight into the alley. There was a phone number on the card in David's hand. I don't know how long I sat there before I called it. Uh, I was numb. The war sounded a million miles away. I don't even remember what I said to the man who answered. I must have given him our GPS fix because they came for us. Who came? David's old unit. Oh, shit. <laughs> No uniforms, but armed to teeth and frosty as hell. They appeared out of thin air like ghosts. I don't know what could have been done if they hadn't come. The bandits might have come back to finish the job. Maybe I'd have just become a footnote on the news. I was beyond caring what happened to me. I only snapped out of it when I felt a hand on my shoulder. We flew home with him at dusk. Hard bunch. Efficient, grim, and barely a word spoken. The silence among the team was heavy. After getting out of so many scrapes, his number had come up with a two-bit bandit. Being in shock was the only thing that held the darkness at bay. You reminded him of Yuri. Of who now? When David was in captivity, he shared a cell with another hostage, a student named Yuri. David was always a stoic one, but that icy facade hit a big heart. Yes, it did. 
Even after a year of daily torture, Yuri's good spirits never wavered. No matter how he was brutalized, he refused to break. At night, he'd say, Ah, David, real men don't need fingernails. Save them for the ladies. Or pinky fingers are the most useless fingers. Never, David never spoke of his time in captivity. He would not have wanted to burden you. One evening, David was alone in a cell. Yuri didn't return. A week later, one of, the, one of his captors told him that Yuri had been beheaded on camera. In reality, his ransom was paid and he had been returned to his family. Knowing David, that did not go over well. Indeed, it was meant to break his spirit, but instead, David broke his guard's neck. We learn later that he killed four men escaping that place, barehanded and malnourished. His first thought was to find the body rather than his own safety. Not sure if that sounds suicidal or like classic David. We don't leave men behind. You don't leave your man behind. But I ran, and he paid for my life with his own. Gladly, Alex, just as you would have done for him had the rules been reversed. How can he be so sure? I can be sure because David was. The grizzled veteran pauses for a moment before extending his hand. What's this? David's challenge coin. He would have wanted you to have it. I don't understand. It's a deep honor that only a brotherhood gives meaning to. You may not understand now, but you will someday. So during my graduation, I stayed with David's family for his Shiva seven days a morning. David's brother signed the Palermo Villa over to me instead. I think he just didn't want the reminder. I moved in there for a few months until I couldn't avoid coming home. When I called with news about dad and mom's accident, uh, I wish, I wish I had known. I was so hurt about you missing my big day and you were burying a friend. But the only thing that would stop me from being there, you were exactly where you needed to be. Jay manages a wry smile. But I'd have been super pissed if you were at a free concert in Mongolia. In spite of the heavy mood, you're finding yourself chuckling along with her. That's about all I'm up for today, I think. I just have one more question. I don't know, sis. Come on, it's an easy yes or no question. All right, one more. Jay stands and walks towards the door. All this talk about best friends reminds me. Jay pauses and looks at you over her shoulder. Did you fuck Tara? Oof. Oof. Lie or tell her the truth? At least I'm glad it said lie or truth here because I honestly don't even know the actual answer to this. I don't remember if it's even told us. We're gonna be honest. This whole talk with her is being about open. Jay turns to face you with a conflicted expression. It's not what you think. She didn't betray you. She was... throwing a Hail Mary. What? Jay approaches you hesitantly. You instinctively rise from your bed, unsure what to expect. Fuck. I can't tell what she's thinking. I already knew. What? Why'd you ask? You feel an inexplicable tension as your sister stops just short of you and looks into your eyes. Thank you for telling me the truth. It would have been so easy to lie. No. Oh. You rest her head against your chest and you feel the warmth of her hands against your back. I meant it when I said it's not what you think. Tara loves you. I know. No secrets between sisters. They've forgotten his scent. Jesus, his body. If we were stuck together like this for a month, I'm in trouble. Jay sighs contently before looking back up at you. I can read her again. She's let me back in. How'd you say, stay so fit on the road? 
fitness industry would be out of business if everyone spent most of their time outdoors. I suppose that's true. How about you don't make me wait five years before we talk about this again? Feels like there's still a lot left to cover. A lot less than there was yesterday. Jay smells brightly at you before leaving. All right, the nearest sunset. The talk went easier than I thought until the Terra ambush. Feels like we're at least have a truce for now. Please forgive an old man's sentimentalism. You too. Well, he seems smaller than I remember. We're just bigger. Just so. In any case, the Prezer lawsuit has proven to be a bigger speed bump than I anticipated. How so? The plaintiff claims to have a whistleblower inside Polygene that will testify against us. That's all bullshit, George. Mom would never resort to... I know, sweetie. The whistleblower isn't what bothers me. Then what's got you rattled, George? Uh, it appears the judge on the case may be compromised. Well, can we file a motion to recuse? We could, if we had evidence. All we have at the moment is educated guesswork. Judge Bear's ex-wife just received a grant of 14,000 shares of Prizer stock. You don't think. Yeah, I think the judge plans to retire with his ex-wife someplace warm and sunny. There are no coincidences. What can we do? I'm working on it. For now, I need you both to listen very closely. Sarah and James loved you both. But they weren't going to put the welfare of so many in the hands of... Kids? Well, neither of you are kids anymore, but you lack wisdom and experience. And there is no better proof of that than your inability to get along. George, I know it seems that way. We are talking. I think we've already come a long way. Nobody would be happier than me if that were true. Nonetheless, one of you will be left in charge of Polygene Biotech when this is over. And right now, neither of you appear up to the task. Because we're not. To your surprise, Jade doesn't protest. Instead, she edges in towards you to so feel the bare skin of her hand against yours. What do you need us to do, George? I have a very short period of time to show you the ropes. So, we will meet here each morning, and I will give you each an assignment. Are we to work together, or... That's up to you, as long as everything gets done. What kind of tasks? Mostly the learning how to run a business kind. But there are other qualities I'd like to have a better look at as well. So that's it? Be here in the mornings? Yes, unless told otherwise. And then we meet again in the evening to see how you both performed. And how long do you plan for this to go on? Until one of you demonstrates you have what it takes. And what if neither of us does? We both do, Alex. We just need to show them. That's the spirit. And that's a great place to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. Um, if you do, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one.